Today we're going to go over another few special cases when it comes to factoring, and that is factoring the sum and difference of cubes. So let's just uh, start off by looking at the following expression. If we were to multiply these two expressions together, what would be the result? So let's actually do this through expansion. a times a squared is going to give us a cubed. a multiplied by negative a b is going to be negative a squared b. a multiplied by b squared is going to be a b squared. And b multiplied by a squared is going to be a squared b b multiplied by negative a b squared is going to be negative a b squared and b multiplied by b squared is going to give us b cubed and we can simplify this because we can see a negative a squared b and a positive a squared b so those will cancel each other out we have a positive a b squared and a negative a b squared so again those are going to cancel each other out and what we're left with is a cubed plus b cubed. And this is what we call a sum of cubes. So a cubed is a perfect cube because a times a times a is a cubed, and b cubed is also a perfect cube because b times b times b is b cubed. So this is what we call a sum of cubes. And what's useful about this is that when we notice an expression that is a sum of cubes, we know that we can factor that using this expression right here. We know that this is the factored form of a sum of cubes. Now let's look at an example that is closely related to that. Now let's see what we would get if we multiplied the following expression. a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. If we expand that out the same way, we're going to get a times a squared is a cubed. a times a b is going to be a squared b. a times b squared is going to be a b squared. b times a squared is equal to, sorry, negative b times a squared is going to be equal to negative a squared b. Negative b times a b is going to be negative a b squared. Negative b times b squared is going to be negative b cubed. And again, we can simplify this by crossing out, we have an a squared b here and a negative a squared b, so these are going to cancel each other out. We have an ab squared and a negative ab squared, so these are going to cancel each other out. And we are left with a cubed minus b cubed. And this is a difference of two cubes. Here we have the sum of two cubes, and here we have the difference of two cubes. And we can see that whenever we have an expression that is represented as either the sum or difference of two cubes, we now have a very useful way to factor those expressions because this is going to be the factored form. And these are two very important formulas that unfortunately you're just going to have to memorize. But luckily they're both very similar and the way that I memorize these is you can see in these two equations the only difference between these two is this first sign and this second sign. Everything else about these two equations is exactly the same. The only difference are these first two signs. So when you're looking at a difference between cubes, because our difference between cubes has a minus sign, our first sign will be the minus sign as well, and our second sign is the opposite sign to whatever this sign was. So that is a, a pattern that is present in both of these formulas. Because this is the sum of two cubes, we have a plus sign first and then the opposite sign. Because this is a difference, we have the minus sign first and then the opposite sign. And our second, um, sorry, our last term, the b squared, is always going to be positive. 
So let's go over some examples where we can use these formulas when factoring sums and differences of cubes. Let's say you were given the following expression and we're told to factor this. Well, one thing that we can immediately recognize is that we have a perfect cube here and a perfect cube here. And if that's not entirely apparent to you, let's just look at what happens when you take 2x squared cubed. What would that give us? Well, we know from our exponent laws that the way that we can calculate this is first by taking uh, 2 cubed and 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. Then we can multiply this 2 by 3 to get the degree of our x, so that is going to be 8x raised to the 6th power. So we know that the cubed root of this is going to be 2x squared. So we can write down 8x to the power of 6 as 2x squared all raised to the 3rd power. And similarly, 27 is also a perfect cube. Let's try find the cubed root of 27. So what number, when multiplied by itself three times, will give us 27? Well, you might recognize that 3 raised to the power of 3 is equal to 27, because 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27. So if we go back to our formula for a sum of two cubes, our formula was a plus b multiplied by a squared minus ab plus b squared. And now using this formula, we can substitute our a for 2x squared. So our a here is equal to 2x squared. Our b is equal to 3. And now when we write this expression out in its factored form, all we have to do is plug in our a's and our b's. So our factored form for this would be 2x squared plus 3a plus b multiplied by a squared. So we're going to need 2x squared squared minus a times b. So what is 2x squared times 3? Well, 2 times 3 is 6. And we have our x squared here plus b squared. So we're going to need 3 squared. And if we simplify this, we have 2x squared plus 3. What is 2x squared squared? So 2 squared is going to be equal to 4. And 2 times 2 is 4. So this is going to be 4x to the 4th power minus 6x squared plus 3 squared is equal to 9. And this is our final answer and the factored form of this expression right here.